It's two in the morning. I'm standing next to a massive diesel generator in Outback Australia. I've set an alarm every couple of hours to wake up and read the meter. Why am I doing this? Because nobody can tell me how much diesel is being consumed. Nobody seems too bothered by this. Because this is a construction worker village, and in three years' time, it will simply be packed up and moved somewhere else. But I am bothered by this. There must be a better way than trucking thousands of liters of diesel, thousands of kilometers, just to burn it up into the atmosphere in a location bathed in sunshine. Every day, we bump up into carbon fails like this outdated ways of doing things that require our attention, opportunities that our generation must take. Because we're living in the fossil fuel age. Whether you're here in the auditorium or you're watching from home, just stop. Look around you. Can you see anything that hasn't in some way been touched by fossil fuels? This carpet, made of fossil fuels. The water you're drinking, cleaned using fossil fuels, even the grass outside mowed using fossil fuels. Changes cannot be left to the next generation. My daughter, 10 months old. My son, three years old. They will barely have turned 30 in 2050. Their opportunity to impact our carbon emissions trajectory by this critical deadline will be severely limited. We are the ones that need to make these changes, because future generations will look back on us and ask, what did you do? And wouldn't it be great if the next generation could look around and struggle to see anything that has in some way been touched by fossil fuels? Getting to that end state can seem big and overwhelming, but I believe that each of us can make that change happen. When we bump into a carbon fail, We can be the ones that work out how to change it. We have to be the ones that work out how. And from my journey, which started next to those massive diesel generators in the middle of the night, my how followed four steps. Identifying, asking why, really why, playing with possibilities, and implementing. Identifying. I'd arrived at the construction worker village earlier that day. It was my first time to a remote construction site. I was working for an engineering company. It was a blue sky, not a cloud in the sky, flat, empty land for as far as I could see. It was the perfect site for solar power. But then I heard it. I saw it. I smelt it. Those huge diesel generators chugging away, powering this remote village. It seemed nonsensical, a complete carbon fail. So this first step was all about identifying the opportunity and embracing that feeling that something could be done better. So what next? I started asking why, really why, asking the village operators why there was no solar, learning that actually they really wanted it, but they just couldn't get the business case to stack up asking why the business case wasn't stacking up, and learning that the key issue was the duration of the village. The village was going to be there for three years, but the payback on the solar was six years. So I started talking with other sites, whether they were experiencing the same issue, and I learned that yes, many sites wanted solar power, but were locked out due to the permanent nature of conventional solar farms. So this step had got me to a hard nut of a problem, a nut that, if cracked, could benefit a wide range of communities, not just construction sites, but remote islands, refugee camps. So how to crack it? I started playing with possibilities. What if solar could be as modular and as movable as those diesel generators? I needed experts to help me work out whether this could be possible. So I started a design competition at the engineering company I was working for, design a modular and movable solar farm. And the top two submissions were not only exciting solutions, but came with two experts who wanted to be part of the delivery team. 
but we didn't have the means to build the solution. We needed partners. So we started talking with solar panel manufacturers, and we said, could we take your solar panels and relocate them? No, it would void the warranty. This was just one example of the many, many times that we heard no. But you, when your objective is change, you have to find a different way. So we kept on looking, and eventually we found a solar panel manufacturer who was willing to play with the possibility of yes. And together, we devised a solution that could be relocated, keeping their solar panels and the warranty intact. So this third step, playing with possibilities, was all about thinking differently, shaping new ideas, and most importantly, finding experts to help build this new possible. It wasn't about being precious or protective of my idea, but rather crowding people in to build our idea. So what next? Implementing. We could build a relocatable solar farm, just needed somewhere to put it, right? Wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Turns out that implementation was only 20% building the solar farm and 80% building relationships. So we started by talking with the users of the diesel generators, like the mining companies, the construction sites. They loved the idea of relocatable solar, but they didn't want to buy it from us. Instead, they wanted to have it from the diesel generator providers. So we had to start working with these companies that we were likely to disrupt. We had to move from appearing like a threat to bringing them on board. Our vision for displacing diesel with solar had to become their vision. And these major players have thousands of diesel generators all chugging away around the world. But by showing them that solar is a viable alternative to diesel, they realized that they needed to be on the forefront, able to offer their clients this new technology for a better world. So this fourth step, implementing, was all about tapping into the network of relationships that control the status quo and working out how to work with and around them to deliver something new. And by reconfiguring those relationships in a sustainable way, we reduce resistance to further waves of change. We drive up FOMO. People want this new type of solution. We pave the way. So fast forward 12 months from standing next to those diesel generators in the middle of the night. I'm back. There's a team of us here now. We are unpacking Australia's first relocatable solar farm for an off-grid construction site. Fast forward a further 12 months, and we're unpacking another relocatable solar farm, this time for a mine site, and this time it's 30 times larger. <laughs> Diesel generators are not yet obsolete. But today, there is a growing number of solar hybrids deployed here in Australia and overseas. There are multiple providers offering these solutions, end clients wanting these solutions. The example I have shared this evening is just one example of identifying, asking why, really why, playing with possibilities, and implementing. There was a clear carbon fail that needed to be addressed. The opportunity seemed obvious. Making it happen has been tough, and we're not finished. But if it means we're one step closer to being fossil free, then it's all worth it. We need to be motivated to build a better world. We need to be galvanized by opportunities. And we need to be prepared to work hard. We really are the generation and in 2050, when the next generation asks you, what did you do, what will you tell them? Thank you. <clears throat>